So hi everybody and welcome to this uh, Fedora Classroom. I'm Alessandro Richiello, Solution Architect for Red Hat and uh, today we will talk about containers with Podman on Fedora 29. First of all, who am I? I'm uh, Alessandro, graduated in Computer Engineering uh, here in Italy. I'm currently working as Solution Architect for Red Hat, as I said, and I'm very passionate GNU Linux fan. My first uh, Red Hat Linux installation was at age of 14. And after that, I never left and kept using Linux in my home and, and work life. But what about me and Fedora? Uh, I use Fedora as primary operating system for work and personal usage from uh, five years, uh, I think. Yeah, and I love placing stickers all over my laptop and let my friends and colleagues guess uh, the open source project behind the logo. My favorite window manager is, is GNOME, uh, so don't blame me. And uh, as, you, as you will see, I currently uh, running Fedora Release 29. What about the logo? You will find the Red Hat logo in almost every slide because the content comes from a Red Hat slide deck. And moving forward, we will talk today about uh, Linux containers. Uh, we will deep dive in the containers architecture. Uh, we will then introduce the containers runtimes. Uh, we will see some examples how to pull and run containers through Podman, then managing networking, logging, security, and persistent storage, some basic example, nothing more advanced. Finally, we will also introduce system services in containers. Uh, at the end of the slides, uh, I will give you also some links and, and docs that you further explore for beginning in the, in the world of containers. Starting talking about Linux containers, uh, what are containers? Uh, uh, as every time you may ask in the, in the technology, uh, on the technology side, it depends who you ask. Uh, on infrastructure side, uh, basically a container is an application process with a shared kernel that uh, is simple and uh, lighter and, de and denser than a, a virtual machine. And this uh, is also portable across different environments. On the application side, so looking at, at the application, the real software you run, uh, a container uh, is just a package that uh, package uh, in, a, in a sort of archive, a tarball, uh, the application with all the, the, the dependencies. Um, with this kind of technology, you can deploy, of course, the container in any environment in seconds, and uh, this could allow actually uh, the uh, easily ac access of uh, this kind of application to different and shared environments. Going through and so uh, um, matching what, um, what a virtual machine and container is, as you can see from the slide, the, a virtual machine isolates the hardware. It, uh, it means that actually starting from uh, the um, the bottom of the stack, uh, so from the hardware, from the real server, your laptop, um, a server on, on cloud, you may have an hypervisor, uh, so a, a software stack running virtual machine. And as you can see, inside the virtual machine, you have a shared kernel with a shared operating system de dependencies. Uh, this uh, shared kernel and shared operating system dependencies are uh, used by multiple applications running inside a virtual machine. On the other side, so moving to the right of the slide, you will see that actually the container isolates the process itself, so the application. You have uh, always an hardware, of course, your laptop, your physical server, you have a, a software uh, uh, hypervisor, then a, a shared host kernel. Uh, in this case, you have multiple container running side by side. Uh, everyone has his own operating system dependencies and his own uh, application. So uh, uh, you, you can see that uh, uh, you can easily manage multiple uh, operating system dependencies with a shared kernel instead of having multiple virtual machines replicating also virtual hardware. Uh, in, uh, in the case of container, you don't, you don't need virtual hardware. Of course, you can use containers on top of virtual machine, but if you, ca if you want, you can easily uh, avoid the, the virtualization and the virtual machine. 
Uh, moving forward, uh, so on the virtual machine side, we have, of course, virtual machine isolation. So you have a, an entire machine completely isolated, and you can have multiple virtual machines isolated each other. Uh, but uh, in other hands, you have a, a complete operating system with a, a static and allocation for computing and, and memory. Uh, with a high, high uh, resource usage, because of course you have to uh, define before of starting the virtual machine, or also editing uh, during the runtime, uh, the, the quantity of uh, compute and memory. Uh, on the container side, you have a container isolation with a shared kernel with bustable compute and memory. So you can define it, you can let the container use uh, at runtime uh, basically, the, the computer uh, and the memory that uh, they need, uh, with of course lower resource usage because uh, effectively the container may consume more uh, lesser resources. Uh, and this, uh, of course, uh, could generate the main differences between uh, virtual machine and container. Virtual machine in general are not portable across different hypervisor and uh, uh, cannot easily use it for a, a packaging application. In other hands, instead, uh, containers can guarantee the application portability because you pack in a, in a all in one archive uh, operating system dependencies and the application in uh, one container, and then you can move your container from uh, laptop to bare metal to virtualization, private cloud, public cloud, so you can easily move. You can build one time your container, your container image you will see, and then move this container between different environments. Going in deep, so in the, in the containers world, uh, we can say that I can, we can think the container as, a, as the smallest compute unit, so the, the smallest uh, part, the smallest archive that we can put uh, in, in front time. But containers themselves are created from container images. Think uh, the container image as the, uh, the, the main archive containing all the, the, the operating system dependencies, and when you run your containers, it, uh, it, it runs starting from a container image. Uh, going in deep, a container image uh, is nothing more than all the libraries we, we, we said uh, that actually let your, your application, your service, be up and running. So imagine uh, libraries as glibc, SSL, uh, binaries, packages, uh, including, for example, software for managing th those packages, uh, uh, repo uh, software repositories, uh, and so on. And usually container images are organized in layers, so you can add layer by layer uh, more software to your container image. But of course, container image could be, uh, again, stored in another uh, element called image registry, where basically you can store multiple type of container image in multiple version, and then pull your image, your base image, your, uh, uh, your favorite one from one of those registry to run your container. And of course, Fedora has uh, its own containers image registry, uh, as you can see, and we will see also in the demo, uh, pointing your browser to registry.fedoraproject.org, you will find a list of all the containers that uh, this registry is hosting. But moving forward, uh, in, and so going in deep in the registry servers, uh, as you can imagine, uh, the uh, registry server can offer uh, a set of action, like uh, find images, run, e run new images, run new build, uh, and also let you explore the, the, the various details that uh, an image uh, uh, contains about software, about uh, tags, uh, and, and so on. So basically, a registry server can expose uh, a set of action for uh, better using them. Uh, and as we said, uh, an image repository uh, contains uh, all version of an image in the, the image registry. Uh, basically, as you can see in this example, you can have in your registry uh, uh, an image called front end with the multiple version uh, and another images for, uh, for example, a database Mongo, uh, again, with multiple version. You have also uh, a special tag 
call it latest, that identifies every time the latest image you pushed, so you uploaded in your uh, container image registry. But uh, going forward, containers don't run on Docker. So um, we have uh, we have this myth about the, the Docker uh, the Docker containers. We have to say that Docker Daemon is one of the many user space tools and libraries that talks to the kernel to set up containers. And we will see uh, why. Uh, basically, containers don't run on Docker. Docker is just a, a format that uh, allow us to play and manage containers. Containers are just processes and uh, they run on a container OS. So container basically uh, are, built of, are built of, uh, of Linux, of an operating system, and there are, they are uh, just processes. Moving forward, a container host, so going in deep, we are going in deep in the, in the technology. Uh, a container host is built of uh, a kernel, as we said, and a container runtime. A container runtime is, uh, is an application that actually let you manage and play um, with, with container, like, uh, for example, run C that Podman uses. Uh, and of course, a, a container host may also um, include, for example, other tool to let uh, the container engine or container runtime uh, talk with other components, for example, orchestrator of Kubernetes, of uh, OpenShift. So uh, the container host is the, the, the physical server or your laptop uh, or your virtual machine that actually will, will spawn new containers. It's just a Linux. It's, it could be your Fedora, uh, a CentOS, an, an Ubuntu, uh, and uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and so on. But uh, again, going again in deep, uh, a kernel is just a set of system calls, memory, CPU, devices, drivers, file system. Uh, the kernel is the gatekeeper for uh, uh, accessing to resources and data structure. And of course, the kernel uh, manages different system call for uh, orchestrating the different processes uh, side by side. Uh, creating containerized uh, Linux processes uh, is nothing more than creating uh, regular processes. Uh, there is no kernel definition for what a container is. Uh, there are only just processes. And uh, what uh, the kernel and uh, container runtimes do is, is to create an, a, an isolated environment that lets you uh, for example, uh, associate uh, a dedicated network, uh, uh, a, ded a dedicated process ID, a mount point, a user that will be used for run the process inside the container. So basically, on the kernel side, there is no knowledge about the container, but only about uh, a sort of segregation of different processes on the same Linux system. Going so to the con uh, returning back to the container engine, uh, as we said, we have different container engine. For example, Run C that uses uh, uses Podman or uh, Container D, Docker D. Uh, of course, this container engine uh, provide API that can be consumed by user or other application, and uh, prepares data and metadata for a container image to run that that container image. Uh, in uh, a real uh, runtime container. And uh, of course, this container engine takes command line option for defining uh, the option and the configuration for the container you want to start for the, for pulling, for, so for downloading images from a, a container image registry and then handling all the other information, for example, mounting a file system, uh, ensuring also the isolation, so defining uh, the, uh, the data structure that uh, the container itself will use. Going in deep in the container runtime, uh, we have to say that uh, there were early concerns, concerns with Docker because actually Docker, as we said, um, is one of the first uh, uh, container engine and format for containers, uh, but of course it requires a daemon uh, for running containers, for building new containers. It requires, of course, root and privileged 
uh, access to, to the runtime. And uh, using uh, a daemon on your container host when uh, playing with the orchestrator like Kubernetes could be, could be uh, of course, a single point of failure. So for that reason, uh, Docker, Red Hat, and uh, other companies early in, the, in June uh, 2015 uh, created two specification, one for, the, for, for um, container runtimes and one for image format. This initiative goes through the name of Open Container Initiative. And this is how uh, the, basically the um, uh, runtime uh, can create a file system bundle and the image format, how to create uh, an image itself, so a container image. So the runtime defines how the container should be run and how the runtime uh, should implement uh, spe the, that specification. And th that was uh, the first uh, and the default implementation is uh, run C that was donated by Docker to the, to the project. And then the image format uh, basically uh, define how uh, a build system should perform a build of a, an image uh, uh, container. And uh, the output uh, includes usually a, an image manifest with uh, some uh, data and metadata, a file system serialization, an image configuration, uh, and, uh, and so on. We then arrive to Podman that uh, is included in the, in the latest uh, Fedora 29, that is uh, a daemonless CLI API software for running, managing, and debugging OCI container and pods. Uh, as we said, uh, uh, it uh, doesn't uh, require a daemon, and uh, is a, so it, uh, it leverage, of course, run C, that uh, is default uh, uh, runtime for OCI containers for the Open Container Initiative, and uh, provides a Docker-like syntax for working with containers. Uh, so it could be uh, really easily to move from a, a Docker CLI to a Podman CLI. It provides remote management via API uh, through Varlink and uh, also systemd integration for managing container uh, in system services. Uh, Podman was part of the project Atomic project on GitHub. Uh, and uh, as we said, uh, it, it um, uh, implies and uh, uh, brings all the technology for managing OCI compatible containers and images. So Podman could be used, for example, for pulling down an image from an image registry and running a new containers, so also managing the uh, just downloaded uh, container image. Going uh, so uh, through, through the example, uh, we, I prepared a set of slides, uh, but of course we will run uh, the example live in a, in, a, in a console on my Fedora laptop. The first one will be pulling a container image uh, from the uh, registry of Fedora project. We will try to uh, pull the image from an HTTPD container image. Uh, for, for the ones who, doesn't, uh, who don't know who, uh, what HTTPD is, it's just a, a web server. So basically we'll, we'll pull down this image and then we'll try to inspect uh, the image for, for details. So we take basically uh, the image from a container registry, from Fedora from container registry, and we search for uh, F29 HTTPD. As you can see, um, there is already the command predefined for uh, pulling down the image uh, and use with Podman. I already installed Podman with just a DNF install uh, Podman on my Fedora 29. And then I open my terminal and run the command. I already downloaded the image, so uh, the process should be really, uh, really fast, as you can see. Uh, but of course, we can inspect the images actually already downloaded by launching Podman images. And this will, uh, of course, display all the, the various images. If we uh, here have multiple images, we, uh, it will display all, all the images uh, downloaded from 
the various registry. Of course, I can also download the images from Docker Hub or other registries. But going in deep, we can, uh, for example, inspect the metada metadata of uh, uh, our container image and uh, going through, for example, uh, the ID that represents the image on, uh, uh, on our system, but uh, in the registry too. Uh, the name on the registry. We have, for example, the user. ID that will be used for running that container image. Again, we have the exposed port, and we will see in the networking part that actually this data could uh, uh, let us to expose a port from the container network directly to uh, our uh, laptop or server network. Again, we have a set of metadata and uh, environment variables that actually could, uh, could be uh, modified and uh, personalized for uh, running in a different way our containers. As you can see, we have also uh, a, a metadata representing the command that will be run into the, uh, into the container. And uh, so the command will be user uh, bin run httpd and finally the various uh, metadata and tag that identify and let the registry uh, handle the image properly moving forward we can then run our just downloaded image so transform that kind of uh, container image in a running container and so we just run podman run httpd, for example. Okay, and as you can see, um, we instructed podman to run a new container. In this case, the, the container uh, is waiting for us uh, as an action because it is in interactive mode. And so we just display the output uh, that uh, is starting actually and is waiting for request. Of course, our shell is locked because it is waiting for more output. So we can basically stop with a control C the, the running and uh, then re execute it with daemon mode. With this kind of option, so minus D we tell to the to podman to run it in background and then we can inspect the running container with the podman ps as you can see podman report us that actually there is a running container on the on my machine uh, that has this kind of id and this kind of image uh, source okay from this we can again of course terminate or stop our container and again check the running containers in background there is no running containers as you can see we just stop it specifying the id of the containers of course we can access also to the previous run container and we have a list of terminated one that actually we, we may and we can remove from the history specifying of course the id of course we have multiple help uh, and option that we may invoke in our command line as you can see there are a lot a tons of uh, of option and value we can define for uh, better running and personalizing the, the execution of uh, of our container in our case we just uh, try this one we give a name to our container to better identifying it during the, ne the next uh, example and so we run podman run minus minus name my HTTP service minus D, so we want to execute it the ground, and then again the 
image name. We just downloaded it uh, as I show you the HTTPD one, okay? And as you can see here, we have this image running in background with the name of my HTTP service. We can then going forward and inspecting not only the, uh, the container image, but also the running container. So we can specify the name. So we, uh, we launch the command podman inspect my HTTP service. And we have uh, a set of, of course, of uh, environment and metadata that is the same of the image. But then we have also some information about the running container because we, we say that actually uh, the kernel and also the container runtime will um, uh, try to uh, virtualize some data structure and uh, uh, some namespaces. In this case, we have uh, a full network namespace um, isolated that actually uh, assigned uh, an IP address to our containers. So we have 10.88.0.44 has IP address for our container. We can so check if our container is running properly, basically contacting the, this IP address. Then you use cool. This is just uh, a command line tool for uh, uh, grabbing web pages. We specify the port. As we saw, actually, the exposed port in the image was uh, 8080. Okay. And then we just run it. As you can see, this is an, uh, an HTTP HTML page. It's just the hello page that uh, the, the web server show when you connect with no uh, index uploaded. Going uh, going forward, and so jumping back for a moment on the slides, we will also run another another example where we show basically. Um, that a container uh, by default is ephemeral. It means that actually it, it holds no data at all. Uh, it can, we can, of course, uh, put text and uh, uh, data on, on a file, on a file system, on our container. But of course, if, if we kill, if we stop the container and start a new container from the same image, the content of that container will not uh, appear anymore, will not be uh, there anymore. So, jumping back to the console, we have already uh, a, um, a container running, okay? And this is my HTTP service. So we can, of course, kill this container first. We remove it. So we clean up our environment, start from a fresh one. Okay, we have no container running. So we run just a container in the ground. Okay, we have our running container here. Then we use a special command called exec that actually let us to go inside our container specifying a process to run. In our case, we want to run a bin bash process. It's just a terminal in our container. And then create some data. My secret data, for example. And I want to place it in a file called my.data. As you can see, now we have a file called my dot data. We can do a cut to see through that, through it. Okay, we exit from our container. We have our container running, of course, still running. We stop it. We then remove it, just to be sure. 
and then we run it again with the same command uh, we, we launched it before. So we run a new container from the same image, HTTPD. Again, we connect the running container, opening a terminal on it. We are using the option minus T Y uh, I because actually we want a terminal and we want it in an interactive mode. So we instruct our uh, container engine to do this. We, we get the ID of the running container. And again, as you can see, there is no data anymore. This for showing you that actually a container is a completely isolated and portable uh, environment, but for image, of course. If we move uh, it to through runtime, and so uh, actually we launch a new container, this container could be, uh, it is, uh, has to be ephemeral. So there is no way to save the data. Uh, the, inside that container instead of and uh, apart from uh, mounting a new persistent storage to it and we will see how to do this in the in the next assemble so for the moment um, uh, keep in mind that actually uh, all the data and uh, the edits and the modification personalization also the um, the adds to uh, to the, the additional software you install to the to the container uh, will not be saved if you actually uh, stop or kill or remove the running containers because the container image is still the same. It's immutable, could not be edited. Of course, you can create new containers and uh, so you can define what are the base content that you, your container will have. So imagine you want to uh, create an HTTPD server with a default web page on it. You can do it, you can build a new container starting from, uh, starting from the, the one that we, we saw. And uh, there is another tool that uh, uh, is called Build uh, that is in the main com companion of uh, Podman, but for building new containers. Uh, again, uh, it's OCI compliant, so it respects the uh, format specification from the Open Container Initiative. Uh, it not requires a daemon and, and neither a Docker socket. And uh, of course, could uh, generate and create new containers starting from a, a Docker file. Uh, unfortunately, we not go through build in this session. I invite you to look through the the classroom uh, uh, that was uh, should be scheduled in the in next week uh, for completely dedicated to the, this tool to, to build up uh, for uh, knowing more. Going uh, to the next example, so going into uh, isolation, we will uh, uh, go to another sample uh, looking at um, the uh, basic uh, or simple modification software installation we can do on our um, container to see uh, that actually we can destroy or make changes to our containers without affecting the main operating system. In this case, I will run again the example on my laptop and I will show you that actually um, the various editing and uh, personalization I will do in the container will not be reported or replicated in the uh, operating system on my Fedora laptop. So moving back to the console, we can look to the running images. As you can see, we have already an HTTPD running container. Again, we use the command exec for uh, executing a new terminal inside the container. We use another option, a new option that we never uh, uh, saw before, that is name minus U stands for uh, uh, user, and we specify the root user for uh, having the rights to access to the container. If we, not, if we uh, didn't uh, execute the 
the, the command without the minus usual root, you will see that actually we have a standard user that also has been defined in the image metadata. And uh, as you can see, this is the ID 1001. Uh, one. Okay. So in our case, we want to force Podman to get us access as root. Okay. And so, then this is, uh, we are uh, inside the container as root, so as a system administrator, and then we can run, for example, software installation. We can install from Repo Fedora IP utils, okay, and proc yes ng software. For looking through the running uh, processes and the uh, the IP address, of course. As you can see, we can just run the system uh, package manager inside our container. It's just updating the repository available uh, inside our container. And uh, this will not affect at all our uh, running operating system. So in my case, my Fedora 29 running on my laptop. Uh, the, the process should complete in, uh, in a few seconds. Basically, it will uh, download the, the needed packages and let them run. After that, we'll try also to make some uh, crash and uh, delete some stuff from the from the container uh, and so broke things uh, and seeing that actually uh, this will not affect at all the, the my Fedora 29 on my laptop. Uh, first of all, try to ping, for example, Google.com. As you can see, the ping is working properly, uh, and so we can reach from our container, the outside, the, the outside network. And this is done through the, the container runtime, of course, that will uh, uh, allow to our containers to talk with the external networking. In our case, we want to, for example, remove the name server, okay? And so we can ping again google.com that actually there is no uh, DNS anymore. So we cannot contact anymore any external address. There is no uh, more name resolution service on, the, on this uh, container. Again, we can, for example, also look over the date and then, for example, move the ATC local time to ATC local time backup, for example, and then link a new time zone, user share zone info, America, New York, in HC local time. And as you can see, we just changed the time zone in our, um, in our running container. We exit from the container itself. We try to ping google.com and as you can see all the dns stuff and so names resolution is working properly and also for example the date showing the previous value so basically the container itself is just an isolated environment that you can use and test your stuff your application without affecting the container host in our case the container host is a fedora 29 my laptop and the container itself is, again, a, a Fedora 29, but uh, an isolated environment. Moving back to the slides, we can jump to the networking side. On the networking side, we will see how to expose our services to be reachable, basically, by the world. Yeah, we, we saw uh, previously that we have... Um, a metadata called exposed port while inspecting uh, our uh, container image. This metadata actually, and uh, we will see in a few moments, again, jumping back in the, in the terminal. 
Inspecting the image called HTTPD, we have a set of, of values explaining the uh, exposed port that could be used by the container runtime for exposing the service uh, included in this container image to uh, the outside. This means that actually, uh, as we saw before, and as we can see again here on the running container, there is, uh, we run again the Podman inspect, there is a networking environment with an IP address. This IP address could be contacted directly from uh, the inside of my machine, but, but, but if I want to expose this service to the outside, I have to map uh, basically the port to my local system, so to my local IP address, for example, to localhost. Again, so we can clean up the environments, so we kill and move the running containers. We can then run again the HTTPD server, okay? We can check if it's running and if it's running correctly, start, starting uh, five seconds ago. Then we can inspect the running containers, graphing for the IP address. Here we go, the IP address. Um, and again, I can check it's working, calling it through Pull. But I can, for example, oh, sorry. run it with a special option that is Podman run minus D for putting in, in background, minus P for mapping the port 8080 to the, the port of my system, 8080. So we map the same port of the container on my system two, and we then specify the container image. So basically we are adding this option, minus P with the, with the port. We run it, we can check that it's running, okay? And as you can see, it appeared here that actually there is a port mapping. This means that actually I can run pull on localhost and getting the same output. This means that actually this same port and, uh, and IP address could be mapped to a port and IP address of my system, of my laptop running Fedora 29 and letting, for example, friends, colleagues, or for example, if I enable routing on my, my home router, also exposing this service outside on the, okay? Then moving forward and go to the log inside. We can, of course, go and troubleshoot, uh, troubleshoot our container. So going through, for example, logs of our, of our container. Uh, we can leverage an option for, uh, uh, and, and a command of, for, uh, for Podman for showing logs. Uh, we will see, for example, that for the running container, we can logs. And as you can see, we are displaying all the output that uh, the, the process itself uh, is uh, pushing through our container engine. So there are the, the standard messages of starting the web server, 
where actually it's opening the port, it's running to a system, system service initialization, then the command line option that was used, and finally, the various requests that are coming. As you can see, he just logged the, the option and then the command uh, came from, uh, from core that actually we, we run through. Uh, of course, this uh, output could be the standard output that uh, the, the process uh, is printing and also the standard there. So we, also, we can also go through any error that uh, the process may encounter the, during the startup and during also the runtime itself. Uh, going, uh, going in deep, in the, uh, I'm seeing that actually there are some questions in the in the chat. We will go through at the end of the uh, of the presentation. We are most almost there. Um, going through one of the lay, the last arguments, so persistent storage. We say that actually uh, any uh, modification, any uh, personalization we, ma uh, we make to our container uh, could be lost if we stop and run again another container from the same container image. Uh, of course, we can uh, mount, uh, we can uh, uh, configure a new running mount point for our container uh, using uh, persistent storage. We will see during uh, this example that we'll create a directory on, the, on our container host, in my case, my laptop running Fedora 29, um, and uh, I then down, download uh, the, an index uh, um, page. For example, we try to, to clone the Fedora registry, only in the main page, not the whole registry, of course. We then set the, the right permission and we instruct Podman to mount the correct uh, directory inside the container. Uh, of course, we will uh, monitor and we'll check the, um, uh, the, the successful uh, mount uh, running again, or maybe opening uh, the page uh, through our web browser. Moving back to the, the console, so uh, we can, of course, Clean up the environment. You can see there is a running container again. So, kill this container, okay. Then we remove, yeah. okay. We have so a clean environment again. We have our HTTPD image uh, already downloaded. We can then inspect again our container image, so HTTPD, and then grab my user. As, he, as we saw before, we have uh, the user uh, 1001, and uh, we will use this information for setting the right ownership to the directory we will create uh, later. Uh, so we can then go through a podman run again, yeah. uh, HTTPD. We run the container directly on uh, with the bash uh, console for accessing the terminal. Okay. And we will look through uh, the HTTPD configuration file, looking for basically the uh, document root. That is the main directory where the web server will display uh, uh, your pages. So we'll grab for document root. And as you can see, it's the standard one. So var uh, www.html. Uh, we can then go out, check that the container is not running anymore. We just terminated it with the control C. And then we create a new www.html directory. In my case, I already created it. It's okay. We then 
go inside this directory. I already downloaded the registry.fedoraproject.org, but in our case, we want to clean up. So we delete it. Okay, just nothing. So we download the web page. We pass some option for letting, converting links, and so on. We take the web page directly from the registry. Okay. It's just all loading. As you can see, it recreated the directory that I uh, prepared before. Then set the right ownership for our container okay so set it uh, recursively for all the subdirectory of our uh, just created one and so finally we can execute the main command uh, we so we created the directory that will be uh, serving the pages that our container uh, will run through uh, so we just run podman run again, minus D, take a name, for example, my, my HTTP service, minus P, 80, 80. We expose the port, and then we map a volume. We map the source volume in OPT var www HTML into var www.html. Then we set the option uh, uh, double points uh, uh, upper Z, uh, where actually uh, we define uh, and we instruct Podman to set the right C uh, Linux labeling uh, for, the, for the container. Otherwise, the C Linux, that is the security labeling system for Fedora, Sentence, and uh, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Otherwise, the Linux will not allow the container to uh, read and write the, 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 this directory. And finally, we specify the name of the container. We can run it. As you can see, Podman just executed container. Okay. We can, uh, for example, go through simple curve. Docker host 8080. See if everything is working properly. Okay. We can then connect to local host 8080 registry, another project. And as you can see, we just replicated the main page with all the, the basic stuff. And we are serving it through our container, exposing it actually on localhost, so directly on my machine. Moving forward, we are uh, almost there with the time. We have also uh, an example of containerized system services. This is because for showing you that actually running new containers uh, has the true Podman could be also integrated directly in Systemd. Systemd is the uh, main uh, system manager of Fedora and uh, uh, CentOS 7, RHEL 7. And of course, uh, you, what we, uh, you are uh, watching in this slide is just an example of uh, the unit file that you can place in ATC Systemd system with the name of your service and instruct system D to interact with Podman and start and stop your container. This basically will allow you to run something like this, uh, my HTTP service, if I'm not wrong. Uh, as you can see, the uh, service is not active, just clean up the environment before uh, going and testing it. So Podman, and remove container, okay. And so again, 
the service is dead, we can start it and then watch over the status. As you can see, the container and the service is running. We can then move back to the uh, web page that we are just cloned. We are cloned, and as you can see, it's working properly. So it continues working. Of course, uh, you can explore and getting get more information looking through this URL. I will uh, uh, send to Fedora Magazine uh, and uh, in, into uh, to Fedora guys all uh, all this stuff. So the slide will be accessible. In this link, you will find uh, a real example showing uh, how to set up a LAMP stack, so a Linux uh, Apache, My, MySQL, and PHP for hosting, for example, WordPress to, to container as system services. So you, you will have a system service for HTTPD and a system service for MariaDB uh, MySQL database. Then we have um, links and documentation, uh, something useful. Before going to uh, question, I want to thank the OpenShift View team, Scott McCarthy and Thomas Cameron and William Harry that uh, give me uh, permission for reusing their stuff and, and uh, slides and all the Fedora team, of course. So, thank you.